Hi, Mr. Corsi here. In this question, we're asked to write the expression 2 cos x minus sine x in this special form. So let's go ahead and attempt to do that. So we're wanting 2 cos x minus sine x to equal k cos x minus a. Now there's not a lot we can do with the left hand side except note that that's negative 1 that's multiplying the sine x. But the right hand side we certainly can do something with. Uh, we can expand. Remember there's a a trig formula that allows us to expand cos a, cos a minus b, which would be cos a cos b, and plus the sign changes, plus sign a sign b. So that's the addition formula that we know. So let's try and do that. Notice that the whole thing is being multiplied by k. So when we get our cos x, cos a, term, it'll need to be multiplied by k. And when we get our sine x, sine a term, it'll also need to be multiplied by k. So this is what we're attempting to do. Where on the left we have two lots of cos x, on the right we have k cos a lots of cos x. Now for these two sides to equal each other, we must have the coefficient of cos x, the, the number multiplying cos x on the right, being the same as the coefficient of cos x on the left, the number multiplying cos x on the left. So you can see that k cos a has to be equal to 2. Otherwise these two sides will not be the same. Let's do a, a, a similar sort of argument for the sine x term. The coefficient of sine x is negative 1 on the left. The coefficient of sine x on the right is positive k sine a. So these two coefficients will have to be equal. So k sine a, k sine a, will be equal to negative 1. So that's the conclusion we can draw if these two expressions have to be the same. So basically we have two equations, two unknowns, k and the angle a. First off, let's get rid of the variable k from this. And we're using a, going to use a, a trig formula, sine a over cos a equals tan a. And by dividing this equation by this equation, the k's will cancel out. This equation divided by this equation, so minus 1 over 2. So we'll get tan a, that's sine a over cos a, tan a equals negative 1 half. Now we're told a can be anywhere from 0 up to 360. But going back up to these two equations, we know in this one that the cosine of a is positive, because remember k is positive, so positive times positive will give us positive. From this second equation, we can see that the sine a is negative, because a positive value of k times a negative value of sine a will give you negative 1. So we know that cosine is positive, and sine is negative. Now, where will that happen? Well, it actually happens in the fourth quadrant. In here, cosine is positive and sine is negative. Cosine is the only one of the cosine tan functions that's positive. So, fourth quadrant angle. So, A is a fourth quadrant angle. Now, tan a being a half, that's not one of our exact values. You may think it is, 
where we have a, a half of an equilateral triangle of side 2. Um, but the tangent opposite over adjacent, that doesn't work here because the 2 is the hypotenuse. So this is not an exact angle. And we'd have to say that the first quad angle we would get from our calculator and would do that by ignoring the negative and just looking at what angle has a tangent that's one half. Now you're checking my calculators in degree mode. On your calculator it may well be tan to the minus one or second function tan, but I use this. What angle has a tan that is 0 0.5? That's one half. And the answer is 26 point five six and so on. So the first quadrant angle is twenty six point five six so on, that number of degrees. So the angle A in the fourth quadrant, let's get rid of this. Remember the angle in the fourth quadrant compared to the first quadrant angle, you'd go all the way around three sixty and then subtract the first quadrant angle. So it's 360 minus. So A will be 360 minus 26.56 and so on. And let's do that again in the calculator. 360 minus this angle here. We get 333 degrees, 0.43 and so on. Now let's round that to doesn't tell us what accuracy to give it to, so let, well, we can round it to the nearest degree, I suppose, approximately 333 degrees to the nearest degree, so long as we round it correctly and say what the accuracy we're using is. So that's the angle A that we're asked to find up here. So last of all, what do we do to find K. Well, again, we use a, a trig formula, and this time we use sine squared a plus cos squared a being 1, and this will eliminate the a variable and leave us with k. So basically, we'll square each side of these equations and add them. So we'll have a k sine a squared plus a k cos a squared, and that'll be equal to negative 1 squared plus 2 squared. Now when we square this we get k squared sine squared a and we square this we get k squared cos squared a and the k squared comes out as a common factor and the reason we're doing that is because we know that sine squared a plus cos squared a is equal to 1. This right hand side becomes 1 plus 4 which is 5 so Eventually, we've got here k times 1, that's just k, squared being 5. And therefore, k is square root of 5. Now, usually when you take the square roots, there's a possibility of a negative square root of 5. But up here, it tells you k is positive. So express 2 cos x minus sine x in the form k, well we know k is root 5, times the cosine of x minus an angle. So it's cosine of x minus 333 degrees. So that's approximate and it's to the nearest degree. So let's now move on to part B of the question. And there it is. It says, hence or otherwise, so we'll be using what we've found in part A, presumably, the minimum value of 6 cos x minus 3 sine x and the value of x uh, that gives that minimum value, value of x between 0 and 360. So let's uh, make room for this new question. And remember what we've found from the first one. We know that 2 cos x 
minus sine x can be written as root 5 times cosine of x minus 333 degrees. Now how is this 6 cos x minus 3 sine x related to this? Well, it's 3 times. So it's 3 times root 5 cos x minus 333 degrees. And we're asked to find the minimum value. So I'm going to have a look at the graph of root 5 cos x minus 333 degrees just to get a feel for what's going on here. Now, cosine graph normally 1, 2, 3, 4, there's 360 degrees. Cosine graph starts out at 1, goes down to 0, negative 1, up, back up to 0, back up to 1. Multiplying it by 3 root 5 will have the same shape, and where the minimum here, it'll be multiplied, so it'll be a lot further down. Maximum here would be a lot further up, so it stretches it in the y-axis direction. It scales it in the y-axis direction. So let's just have a look at y equals cos x minus 333 degrees to see what's going on. If we subtract 333 degrees from the cosine function, then we've moved the cosine graph 330 degrees to the right. So this point here would have moved 333 degrees to the right and it would arrive around there. Now you'll notice that that's um, a little bit short of 360. In fact, it's 27 degrees short of 360. So in other words, all of this would move 27 degrees to the left. If you're moving at 333 degrees to the right, you'd be as well just moving it 27 degrees to the left because it's cyclic and it's got a, a, a repeating pattern every 360 degrees. You notice 333 three, three plus the 27 gives you 360. So I'm moving this graph slightly to the left. 27 degrees to the left. So where we used to have a minimum which occurred at 180 degrees, we're now going to have that minimum occurring at 180 degrees minus 27 degrees. So the minimum occurs when x equals 180 minus 27 degrees. So that's at 153 degrees, approximately. Remember the accuracy of the first one. First answer was to one to, to the nearest degree. That's 333 degrees from part A. So it's that to the nearest degree. And remember, looking at this graph, normally uh, this cosine x minus 333 would have a minimum of uh, negative 1, but we're multiplying it by 3 root 5. We're scaling this graph down and up by a factor of 3 root 5. So instead of negative 1 as a minimum, it'll come down to a minimum of negative 3 root 5. And that minimum value is negative 3 root 5. So looking at this question, we've found the minimum value. That's part 1. And the value of x for which it occurs is 153. So that's part 2 answered. 153 degrees, the minimum value is negative 3 root 5. So that's Mr. Corsi signing out and thanks for watching this video. Thank <music> you.